Despite being roundly paid by critics, Batman v Superman Dawn just was very successful film, making over $330 million in the US and $872 million worldwide in the $200 million budget. While I initially planned to do a marathon of the previous one to feature title characters, circumstances beyond my control are causing me to do this instead. So let's open up Batman v Superman Ultimate Edition and see how it compares to what we got in theaters. As expected, there's product shows in Murder Thomas and Martha Wayne. Right off the bat, there's some changes from the theatrical version, such as why the name Martha is trigger for Bruce. Turns to the last word heard his father said before his parents died. We then get a new perspective on the highly controversial final battle of Man of Steel, which is a very intense scene on its own. But this film shows the trial expansion of Wayne Finance being caught in the crossfire and the final battle against generals on the other Phantom Zoners. Let's talk about these special effects are highly impressive. Very realistic to the point of really getting a feel of the direct atmosphere of the movie. I met Zack Snyder is quite the becoming controversial director. I can't deny he's got a hell of a spectacle. As I said before, when the first 10 minutes of this cut were leaked online, these are what's me on this version. Andrew and Bruce goes into the man played Ben Affleck, his outrage events and how to stop Superman. We cut to 18 months later, with some diaries in the Indian Ocean cover Samuel Kryptonite and Wreckage the World Engine. After that, we cut to Nairobi, Africa, with Lois Lane. He Played again by Amy Adams, Major Jimmy Olsen interview a general ruling of a local village, which man also then found to be a CIA informant and killed by the general. Let's also in these first 15 minutes, there are already many differences between the way the scene is presented. Ed, so he has a whole meeting was a trap, and by playing with the Russian mobs, here's Drew Superman out to implicate him with Lois. Superman then launched a general through a bunch of buildings. Superman used extreme speed. General fainted. While joking aside, however, the shit's in the testimony of Senator Finch, played by Holly Hunter. Demand Superman and take responsibility for what he's done. In a world where we're facing many chances of its own, I mean, there's plenty of that cinema. We cut to Gotham City. How we learned this continuity span is much more an anti hero than prior film versions. It also turns out this cut shows greater detail how he apprehends criminals such as a human trafficker is shown beaten and bloody watching her great, getting her brain and she for bad, I mean. Even this dingy abandoned building, there's a whole dark trilogy version of Gotham being standard of modern day Chicago. Batman itself was a redesigned costume and definitely has a pinch after returns. Bat heck Metropolis, no one's clear to how possible what happens to the embrace in the bathtub. In the bat cave, we see how Alfred Pennyworth, played by Jamie Irons, as after helping him prepare Bruce and Batman for his conflict against Superman. Within moments, these two join favorite versions of characters. Speaking of which, we then cut to LexCorp, where we see the extended universe version of Lex Luthor played by Jesse Eisenberg. I was wondering how he would stack up against previous version of the character, and shouldn't that he's a total madman. His entry doesn't be seen as also he edited a show with a Canadian bastard this version of Lex is, man. Just combine Eisenberg's between Mark Zuckerberg and Social Network, and after the clock like orange you've got him. It's here that I address the biggest change from the ethical version. The plot is much more focused on the concept between Superman and Batman. And we'll give a smooth setup of future forensics in the universe for one hand the answer is one woman and the other metahumans. <laughs> As for the Granny's Peach Tea scene, my reaction to that was simply hey, this. Gentlemen, can we make this a thing? The internet being what it is, reply with an emphatic yes. Bag at Wayne Manor. Manor, we see more of Bruce trying to find locations of something known as white Portuguese. Has given an opportunity to find more Lex's benefit in Metropolis Library. Also, as I guess, Jason Todd Robin is dead in this continuity, confirmed by two movies' costume props that dead in the family has candidates in the universe. To say that I can't wait to see what Jerry Leo's Joker can do with Suicide Squad is putting it mildly. Regarding Lex's speech to Cultural Lee in Metropolis, he may have the aura of a trust from Brad with a Vox Mulder, but at least he's more convincing than Melania Trump, and he didn't steal from anyone. Bruce and Clark meet, and Lex further says the battle between the two is after his crowd security at LexCorp servers. Incidentally, Clark's a new report of fire at the day of the Death Festival, and sees a little girl trapped inside the admiration of all the citizens. While I did notice this scene when I saw the actual cut, this is another element taken in Dark Knight Returns. It's going to montage of rescues and a cut of a group of fictional real life commentators just Neil deGrasse Tyson as himself. Unsure what to do next, Clark goes to see his adopted mother and mother camp played again by Diane Keaton. While Willis tries to investigate what led to the incident in Africa, Lex frees a man named Wally using a wheelchair and suit and testify against Superman. So when this cut, uh, uh, Lex, as usual, has an ulterior motive, and we also get confirmation that Bat brand is a death sentence for men on the inside. I can understand why they cut this, to be honest, I mean. 
Uh, but our third, we know there's currently a form of interest Diana Prince, played by Gal Gadot. Because honestly, they say I couldn't think of a better person to play the character of Wonder Woman. I mean, she's probably the most mainstream DC hero after Batman and Superman, and I'm very excited to see her own movie next year. Now comes the extended version of the Nightmare sequence, which shows what happened to just the good faith of the United as a team. The walls have become a war torn hellhole. Batman is forced to take up arms, and with Martha Kent and Lois Lane now dead, Superman has gone off the deep end and keeping him himself and humanity safe. Bruce is then told by a mysterious figure in a bright light that Lois Lane has to keep everything and is urged to find the other meta humans where it's too late, man. Now we get more on how to fight set up. Clark is going to follow detailing of Batman's tactics and demon criminals on Gotham, and Bruce will play the sequence of white Portuguese. It's a freighter carrying the kryptonite. In another scene, we get more fuel of the conga as Clark finds out what happened to a prisoner that was transferred to the Metropolis. That night, a bunch of Russian gangs are attempting to transfer the kryptonite to LexCorp, and Batman tends to intercept the truck carrying it. We are then introduced to the redesigned Batmobile, which expands on tankily designed Tom the Dark trilogy and is highly influenced by the one that it returns. I know I'm mentioning that book a lot in this review, but something fat and shaping the modern day perception of Batman, so it's quite comics and other new adaptations. And it's about the Batmobile crashing through escort vehicles driving the buildings. I would suggest it's another uh, version of Batman who's more flexible with his famous no guns, no killing rule. I mean, generally, breaking that taboo is a sign that his enemies must be stopped no matter the cost. I mean, anyway, Superman confronts Batman and Dr. Gotham. Rips the doors off the Batmobile and gives him an ultimatum him of the bat is dead. Batman's response, however, Tell me, do you bleed? You will. That was the moment that got me to see the movie. I never had any doubt in Affleck putting on the mask, and his character seems to further compounded by this addition, cemented him as a gross detective and taking direct cues from Frank Miller. When Superman prepares to testify in Senate, Lex successfully attained a kryptonite. And more material editors cut it seems to rush Molly as he's also getting a Clark's witnesses, and the assault nearly begins coming to be a coup set up by LexCorp. Lex only realizes they're talking swarm work that the hearing is a trap and tries to alert Superman before it's too late. Unfortunately, Lex gets to the hearing first to make sure his ass remains in play, and they rush a mob ma ma boss push another witness from the train. At the halfway point of this cut, as Lex symbolically throws Finch's taunt back at her, the hearing is bomb killing Sandra Finch in the process. I mean, while the theatrical cut is definitely an intense film, the new footage after this cut uh, makes the experience a patently adult take of the DC canon. While not in the same world as the Dark Knight saga, this does have a particular impact on how the lines between good and evil much less clear cut than were in the past. As Lex is blind, he will rage after Batman steals a cryptic on LexCorp, and Batman prays to get over war against Superman. Lex then decides to use the stolen Kryptonian technology as advantage. Alex has tried to, tried to divide words between superheroes before. His morning who is for doing so, he was able to decide for power and see Superman standing his way of that power. Here, he wants to take him down in his sheer malice. Bruce also goes to the files of the metahumans, so he has a one last life of more than 100 years. Initially, he uncovers data on the Flash, Cyborg, and Aquaman. Puts to think that last one looks really badass. When Jason Momoa, the MMA, hey, playing him, and, and Jeff Johns now getting directly involved with the best things in the universe. I think we're going to officially put the infamous Super Friends incarnation behind us. He's essentially an Atlantean demigod in human form and has been his portrayal will reflect that. Lex also ready as a backup plan of sorts, using the means of General Zod and his own blood to resurrect an ancient warlord. I mean, I know what everyone's going to ask, but I'll address it when the time comes. Lois then investigates Wally's apartment and discovers that Lex coated Wally's wheelchair with lead to fluff Superman and another scene of the ultimate cuts. Alfred then tries to convince Bruce one last time not to go through his vendetta against Superman. Bruce sits up the fight in the title. The battle arm is ripped right out of the page of Dark Knight Returns. Then Lex kidnaps Lois and Martha uses Burgundy to draw Superman out. While Superman is able to rescue Lois, but Lex begins Superman's sadistic choice. Face off against Batman within the hour, or Martha dies. Even though Lex retains a variant and other versions of the character being abused by his father, he's officially gone off the deep end. The ultimate cut is taken from the cartoonish prep many people label Ice Mocha's trail of the theatrical cut and turn him into a certified and insane man with no redeeming qualities of any prior version of character. His treatment of authority figures goes from merely deceitful to completely manipulative. It goes from merely being condescending towards Superman to being openly vile and cruel. While other earlier versions of character, character do have moments they can't go back from, I can honestly say without hyperbole that Ice Mocha's portrayal is the most evil version of Lex ever seen. It's probably the most deepest turn as a villain in the next-best comic adaptation since Ozymandias from Watchmen. 
Diane has given the information to MetaHuman to come out it just is going to be one movie instead of two, it's going to be incredible. Except he helps up Cyborg, Fighting Aquaman looks incredible. Now, to the end of this cut, it's time for the Battle Dex Pause that says, The Greatest Gladiator Man in the History of the World. It's 20 years ago, and we finally have technology to pull this off. Off. Even if I acknowledge Liberty's neck is taking serious material how controversial, I can't deny he has a hello on his spectacle. The fight begins as Batman uses his power power weapon to level the playing field, but even with his power dampened, Superman slides is built like a linebacker. So then also, if you should say the ultimate cut manager to take a movie and enjoy its own, and even more powerful. The fight is full of alternate takes, extended scenes, expanded choreography, and special effects shots are covered in the ethical version. Just when Batman is about to throw the final blow of the Kryptonite Spear, Superman has mentioned the name Murder that makes him realize the one man war that Superman is wrong. Suppressed memory of his parents' murder is triggered, and convinced, no one's convinced that Batman saved Murder Kent. In the days, Batman describes the spear and heads off the docks. The redesigned Batwing is on course to us to the warehouse on the port, and the Mahafia has his mother held hostage. Try to ward him off by the weapons to no match of Batman's gadgetry and combat skill, I mean. I also really like how Alpha has a more active role than prior film adaptations, more or less teaching Batman everything he knows. Batman uses gear to take out the thugs until only the boss, Anton Dion, never remains. Fight choreography in the scene also makes Batman to show the combat in bloody, bone breaking, harder intensity. In the flash, Batman grabs his scourge's gun and shoots Anton's propane tank, catching him over just in time. Lex, however, has one more trick up his sleeve, the ancient warlord Doomsday. Taken from the landmark story arc of the Death of Return Superman, Lex has now become irredeemable. Well, while the character may differ significantly in how he's portrayed in the comics, that doesn't make him any less frightening. A massive titan born of cruelty and malice, struck of powers with his, his frightening as a redesign. Given his form and biologically enhanced superpowers, it reminds you of Tetsuo's fine form in Akira. So even this is a more like a faithful live action version of Akira than the numerous failed pitch we've had over the years, I mean. Even nuclear striking is not enough to stop Doomsday, and the shops are going to be in weather figure space is to break into Batman after their returns. Doomsday shoots down the Batwing, and Batman Doosley needs a kryptonite spear to stop Doomsday. Superman recovers his strength by a yellow sun, and one of them arrives to show what he can do. Combat skill is worth the Greek demigods human form. It makes me even happy that they got an actual Greek pick after to play here, Gal Gadot. Now, the footing for Justice League is latest DC Sleepers heroes against Tombstone in combat. Yet, the beast feeds off their energy. The longer the fight goes on, the stronger it becomes. Even so, Lois managed to find the spear in a flurry of explosion and laser blasts, but Superman has to save one of those laws of the world. Even though Superman knows the Kryptonite will harm him as well as Doomsday, he knows what will be done. He decides to sacrifice himself and seeing that puts his own span of heartbreaking fight in the comics. Superman rams Kryptonite spear into Doomsday's heart, but is impaled on Doomsday's spine in the process. While they may have tried to adapt the story in other films before, the first time in mainstream comic book blockbuster, Superman is dead. In a new scene added to the ultimate cut, as Lex is captured in comms, Arsarid, he is seeing him uh, conferring with the ancient being Steppenwolf. His head is shaved as Batman vows to have him transferred to Arkham, and Clark is buried as family home in Smallville. As for this hint of his possible resurrection, regarding a man who came to our world, was admired by many, hated by few, and suffered for us all, make your own assumptions. So, they close on Clark's funeral, and is given a grand send-off. Iron Forces of Pallbearers, the 21 Gun Salute, Missing Man Formation, and Flown Overhead, and the Amazing Grace on Bagpipes. Bruce declares that men are still good, but he and Diana found a vow to find the other metahumans, realizing that Doomsday is just one threat. There are countless others waiting. We need to be ready for them. Even as someone who enjoyed the theatrical version, I can understand why a lot of people didn't like it. I submit, however, that even I was surprised to find like, the Ultimate Edition even more, I mean, that. Uh, while the I still don't think it's a groundbreaking movie, the Dark Knight trilogy of Marvel Cinematic Universe are it's still a unique version of DC's biggest names, and much stable funny with Sheer Continuity the Green Lantern was. I also note, uh, given how many people displeased Creative Liberties taken in with the comics of Dark Storyline, it's simply one adaptation among many we have over the years. In essence, the conflict we seem to be going through is some of the pandemic the comics themselves. What may entertain one audience is not guaranteed to please another. This movie is a key example of that, as well as general divide between the expectation of critics, hardcore fans, and general audiences. Still, I would suggest the film was such a big hit, it is a testament to the long-standing of the characters. 
Even to people who never read a comic book in their life, a person more likely to find out who Batman Superman is than before they find out who Thomas Edison is. Be this as may, for my money, the Ultimate Edition takes what was for me and a person fiction when Block was turning into dark, gothic, and apparently adult take on DC Comics. While the whole slave movie is playing for the coming years, I'm very eager to see what's on the table as well as what other people think. Regardless of whether or not everyone liked the movie, it has become a very good topic for discussion. I lost count of how many videos or essays I've seen both defending and criticizing from what it is. A movie that's an origin story, a setup of future films, and social commentary all in one. With that in mind, I encourage those who have not seen the Ultimate Edition to do so and make a video or post about it so we can add the discussion. Right now, I'm going to keep enjoying this movie. I have been watched out of four. My reaction to Fantasy Cut is still the same when I watch out the actual version. Brain on Suicide Squad, Wonder Woman, and Justice League. Bang. <laughs>